I'm Dr. Brian Kotick, the Managing Director of the Manitoba Wildlife Federation. Today I'd like to talk to you about a serious wildlife disease that has implications not only for our wildlife resources, but also potentially for human health and for our economy as well. I'm talking about chronic wasting disease, or CWD. CWD is a highly infectious disease caused by proteins known as prions. The disease was first observed in captive mule deer at a research facility in Colorado in the 1960s. Through the commercial farming and trade of infected wildlife, it is now present in several cervid species, including mule deer, one white-tailed deer, and elk. CWD is present in 24 states in the U.S. and in Saskatchewan and Alberta as well. The disease has also now been transmitted from captive cervids to wild populations. As far as we know, there are no farmed or wild cervids in Manitoba that are infected with CWD. However, the disease is literally on Manitoba's doorstep. So what is CWD? It's a prion disease that causes irreparable neurologic damage to the brain and central nervous system. It is always fatal. There is no cure. CWD has a potential to cause local extinctions in wildlife populations. CWD is part of a group of prion diseases that include the familiar mad cow disease, or bovine spongiform encephalopathy, or BSE. It was originally thought that mad cow disease could not be transferred from beef cattle to humans. Unfortunately, this assumption was wrong, and several hundred people in the UK and other countries have died from eating beef contaminated with mad cow. Unlike mad cow, there's been no documented transfer of CWD to people, but the BSC lesson is one that we need to pay attention to as CWD is in the same family of diseases. In fact, recent medical research indicates that the potential health risk to humans from CWD is not zero. So what does this mean to the thousands of hunter families who may be inadvertently eating venison contaminated with CWD or who field dress and handle potentially contaminated venison and carcasses? Well, we don't have those answers yet, but there are precautions that hunters can take and I'll address those in a minute. So how did CWD spread from infected captive animals to wild populations? The disease is spread through a number of mechanisms, through saliva, urine, feces, and blood of infected animals. Even something as simple as nose-to-nose -nose contact of farm cervids with wild cervids through a fence is enough to spread the disease. Once out in wild populations, the carcasses of infected deer and elk become super sites of infectivity where other curious cervids may pick up the disease from a carcass or the ground and plants surrounding it. The prions can persist in the environment for several decades, especially in the soil. Plants then take up the prions through their root systems. How this could affect our billion dollar agricultural industry in Canada is unknown, but the consequences could be catastrophic. So how do we deal with this? Hunters can minimize the risk of exposure to CWD. Firstly, and especially in areas known to have CWD, Never harvest an animal that does not appear to look healthy or is behaving strangely. CWD in deer causes some noticeable symptoms such as profuse drooling. They are also lethargic and may not seem to be concerned with the presence of humans. Finally, and in the latter stages of, this, of the disease, the animals will experience severe weight loss. Avoid harvesting such animals. Hunters should also take precautions when field dressing and butchering an animal. This goes for any wild animal. This includes wearing latex gloves while handling a carcass and meat, and cleaning your knives and other equipment thoroughly. Finally, you can have your animal tested for CWD. Do this prior to eating meat from a harvested animal that came from an area that is known to contain CWD. In Manitoba, there is a requirement for hunters to submit samples for CWD testing from deer and elk that have been harvested in many of the game hunting areas in western Manitoba, particularly ones located along the Manitoba-Saskatchewan border and adjacent to Riding Mountain National Park. 
This is a mandatory requirement, and it is in the best interests of our public health and that of our wildlife that you comply with this requirement. Please consult the Provincial Hunting Guide for details. On a provincial and national level, the Alliance for Public Wildlife, an organization who has followed the CWD issue for years, has four key recommendations for action. Firstly, we must contain the geographic spread of CWD by enacting and enforcing an immediate ban on the movement of all live cervids, all potentially infected carcasses, and all other sources of infected materials. Secondly, hunters need to have access to a convenient, cost-free, and rapid testing of animals. Thirdly, we need to ensure that CWD-infected material does not reach food or feed chains and that it is instead properly disposed of. And finally, we need to establish and fund research and develop science-based policy to protect our public interest, including health, wildlife, agriculture, and our communities. In summary, as of 2017, there are no known cases of CWD in our farmed or wild cervid populations here in Manitoba. However, based on how this infectious disease has already spread in North America, we need to be vigilant and to take immediate steps to keep it out of Manitoba. <music>